But that was an energetic performance. I feel more energetic now. So first of all, I would like to start my speech by saying a big thank you for the curators team for organizing such an amazing event. And secondly, I feel more included by the backstage. <laughs> Yeah, it's stars, and I feel included, you know, as an analog astronaut. It's so amazing to stand in front of uh, the stage and talk something which I really like and passionate about. So, I would like to start my speech by saying, just imagine this. Close your eyes and just imagine this. You're floating on space and you're surrounded by shimmering galaxies and fitting stars, thousands of them. And coming back to reality, you're, you're experiencing weightlessness and you're surrounded by an envelope of space. Like, you're, you're, you're experiencing vacuum, you know? That's something which brings back to reality. This is where we come to our topic. I will be talking about the art of space simulations, drawing lines, blurring lines between reality and fiction. Reality, fiction, space, sounds like a Hollywood movie, right? <laughs> the same here. When I wanted to be an astronaut, like, I, I wanted to be an astronaut since I was six years old. I always wanted to be one. <laughs> But I don't know how to get there. Maybe I, I had influence from movies, books, or or from my parents' uh, books as well. Like they like space, and I like space too. But I started becoming a little bit more curious. So once I started studying my university, I started exploring a little bit more about space. Then I started finding this analog astronaut programs. Now I'm an analog astronaut. Most of you have this question, what is an analog astronaut? Basically, analog astronauts, we guys are like the lab rats, <laughs> in simple terms. But analog astronauts on serious terms, these people are the ones who go to research in a long-term or a short-term uh, habitat where they have simulations similar to an astronaut, either in a Mars or a moon environment. They make like a lot of research a series of researchers on different aspects. Like, they make like researchers based on biology or psychological way or even emotions, you know. Because when it comes to long space journeys like Mars or, or like Moon, it, it, can, it can create more uh, damage to your psychological health. This is really important when it comes to long space journeys. So, this brings us to the next question, who can be an astronaut? Most of the people think that, you know, like they limit their mindsets that, oh, I studied a different field or like different, I have different capabilities, I cannot be. Anyone who is curious can be an astronaut. Anyone who wants to build something or like imagine something, play games, if you're curious about something, you can be an astronaut. So this was one of my pictures taken during my analog astronaut missions. This was after like uh, my isolation period in uh, the space habitat. You can see there is like, uh, we are working on our terrible wounds. You can see the surface layer of Earth. With, you can see that uh, with the GoPro, we could just took this, took this picture. And this is my favorite picture of all times. The previous picture you saw, this picture we took it on 33 kilometers above the atmosphere. This picture you see, we took it on 21 kilometers above the atmosphere. You can see the way how it looks because of hot air balloon, the way how it bursts. We sent two hot air balloons on this one. So the way how it bursts was like so amazing. This is one of my favorite pictures during my own missions. And people also think that, you know, space simulations mostly like sound really childish because people always wanted to be 
as much when they are kids. But once they start growing up, they just grew up on their dreams or they just you know, realize that they cannot be, but they can go for the simulations and experience different things. Space simulations are not only for kids, it's all for adults, researchers, artists, designers. Even people can experiment with sounds. But in this picture you can see, you know, like people started growing plants in different gravities. This was an experiment between like two colleagues, like it was me and my colleague Mateus. We were trying to grow plants under different gravity. This was a picture of we us growing plants in mass gravity. The picture above you see is the gravity uh, like uh, on zero, uh, the first day. It was on mass gravity. And day nine, the plants have grown, but it, the, the, plant, the way how the plants grow was, it took more time than usual, because if you grow the same set of plants in Earth, it will, it will grow so fast. But in mass gravity, it's totally different. This was one of the useful aspects which we obtained during the mission. Talking further, you know, like, when we are kids, we like to use, use to play with robots and stuff, or even with kettles. Talk, like this, this helped us in the habitat, when I, was, when I was in the habitat. This picture you see is a picture of a robot, which my colleague built when he was really young. Right now, that colleague is working in the Canadian Space Station, the Canadian Space Arm. And the picture on the right, you see one of my colleagues uh, started working with a kettle, which is kind of looking like a witchcraft, which we do in the kitchen when we are kids, you know? <laughs> mixing up stuff, <laughs> mixing up random stuff from mom's shampoo or dad's shaving cream. <laughs> It's something similar which we did. We had a heating pipe, which, which this experiment was really useful, like to understand the principles of space station. This this pipe you see, it can be used in a space station as well. Like the same principle can be used in space station to carry some water. So people often think, you know, like space is so limited and it's not for everyone. But it's for everyone. And as Carl Sagan said, something, somewhere something uh, incredible is waiting to happen. I think it applies to space as well. Because when it comes to space, somewhere, uh, it's always something is happening, you know, like every day there is a new galaxy or a new star which is being born or which is being destroyed. So that's how it, uh, it's, it works in space. So yeah, and I would like to end my speech by saying I'm Kirin Anandan. I'm an analog astronaut and a mechatronics engineer. I defer our space for humanity. Thank you.